Hey guys, Tommy from the Run Testers. In this video, myself and Nick are going to be doing a comparison of the Nike Invincible 3 and the New Balance More V4. Let's take a look. The Nike Invincible 3 costs £169.95 or $180. It weighs in at 299 grams or 10.5 ounces for men in a size 8 and the drop is 9 millimeters. The New Balance Fresh Foam More V4 costs £140 or $149.99. It weighs in at 298 grams or 10.5 ounces for men in a size 8 and the drop is 4 millimeters. The Invincible line made a big impression when the first version was released using the same Zumex foam found in the Vaporfly and Alphafly but applying it to a max cushion daily shoe. The third version sees updates across the shoe including a wider midsole to improve stability, a taller foam stack to increase the cushioning and a smaller heel clip to provide a better fit. The updated design also makes the shoe slightly heavier than the previous versions. The shoe features a durable fly knit upper that's designed to offer a supportive fit as well as improving ventilation through breathability zones. In addition, there's a new lining underneath the heel to provide a more stable and slightly firmer ride. The Fresh Foam More V4 is a max cushion shoe designed for plush, comfortable miles that features a number of design updates over the More V3. The biggest of those is the addition of even more Fresh Foam X midsole foam that makes it higher and wider than its predecessor. A design feature that aims to improve the stability of the ride as well. New Balance has also updated the outsole with new cushion zones across the length of the shoe as well as flex zones to give it a more natural feel on the run. The shoe still features a rocker profile for a smooth transition and a modified engineered mesh upper that's built to feel plush but ensure ample breathability. The outsole is covered with a generous level of rubber for grip and to protect the midsole foam. There's also a reflective logo on the shoe for added visibility at night. Okay, Nick, let's jump into the fit of these two shoes. How have they been for you? Uh, they've been fine for me, Tom. In my normal size, I've been completely true to size in both shoes. I keep dropping one of them. Uh, no problems at all about room in the toe box. The Nike at the back is a little bit loose around the heel. I haven't any heel rub myself, but I could see how that's going to be a problem for some people. But yeah, I've been completely happy true to size. How about you? Yes, uh, true to size to me. I've not had any issues. We got some comments or a comment the other day saying that we don't go into too much depth with the fit section on the videos I, I have absolutely nothing else to say about these shoes uh they fit me perfectly no issues at all i definitely say true to size in them we go into depth as a problem but yeah i don't know how many times yeah. i can tell you they're they're, they're fine both of these fine <laughs> The run test then. So these are both two cushion shoes. I think we know where well, I've done quite a lot of running in uh, the New Balance More V4. Uh, how has the run test been in both of these shoes for you, Nick? Well, different, different in both of these mm -hmm. shoes. They're both big cushion shoes. They weigh almost exactly the same amount in my size. Uh, you know, designed for a similar job, but they have very different rides. It's fair to say the New Balance has got that lower drop, the big rocker, the firmer foam, the sidewalls of foam, all the extra stability you get there. And it's just a roll through cruiser of a shoe nothing too exciting underfoot but you can tick off a billion miles in it in exactly the same way and it'll be fine whereas the invincible is is a much more interesting exciting shoe much softer much bouncier despite the changes nike has made it's still not a stable shoe in my opinion like i was a bit wobbly in it and that creates problems so i was trying to use the shoe at a time when i was coming back from a little niggle in my knee um and i just found it a bit wobbly for my you know to use and when I'm fresh and feeling good and don't have anything like that, I love the feeling of the shoe. It's really bouncy, really exciting, really fun. But then there are times when I just don't feel that comfortable using it for easy runs. And that's a bit of a problem in a shoe that you spend a lot of money on. Whereas the New Balance is never exciting. It's a it's a very it's a very kind of staid ride. It rolls you through, you can you kind of forget about it, but at the same time it's it is stable and very protective on the legs. How have you found these done? Yes, I largely agree with you. So the New Balance More V4, I think you hit it nail on the head there. It's a lovely cruiser. It does have a nice bit of cushioning in it, but it's not cushioning that deadens the, the step every time you, you, you're you running. It just sort of rolls you forward nicely, very comfortable. Um, I mean, still my favourite cushion shoe. Uh, I, 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 you kind of said it there that if you're just running forever in it, it just does the same thing. It just rolls you over, keeps you going. And I did uh, quite a lot of miles in this earlier in the year and... I, yeah i just think it's a great shoe for for doing that uh it's not a remarkable shoe in a lot of ways you don't put it on and go wow this is bouncy or wow this is incredibly soft it's just a very solid 
comfortable, efficient uh, cushion shoe. Um, and I don't think you can really go wrong with it. I think I think most people would enjoy running in this shoe. Uh, the Invincible 3 is an interesting one um, because obviously the Invincible is a fam- shoe famous for having that Zoom X soft cushioning in it. Um, I don't find it, I, I've not had any issues, injuries, anything like that. So I don't find it particularly unstable. Um, I actually think it's, it is slightly better than the previous version, not massively. Um, but I do think that the Invincible 3 has slightly lost a bit of its um, enjoyment factor with some of the updates that have been made to it. And I know the updates have been minimal, but I do think it's a little bit less enjoyable than the Invincible 1 and the Invincible 2. I think it's just a little bit more rigid than the previous Invincibles. I don't think it's massive difference. I just don't enjoy it as much. But yeah, it's still a lot softer than the New Balance More V4. And I do think that it's a shoe that doesn't necessarily lend itself nicely to a rocker, or well, a nice rolling motion. It, it feels to me like a shoe that really is just sits in that comfortable recovery run, um, enjoyable daily miles, that sort of thing. But I wouldn't use this for longer runs if I wanted to sort of maintain a nice, consistent pace. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, I, I think I also much prefer the previous version of the Invincible. It was a lot lighter for one as well, which does help a bit, even with big cushion shoes like this. So I think I think if you were looking for one of these shoes as a daily trainer that you want to do some you know speedier stuff in, I think the more responsive midsole in the Nike probably would help out on that front. You get a bit more bounce out of it. Whereas for me, the more before really feels like that cruiser, same pace, same you know, same motion for whatever run it is. Interesting thing about this shoe is it's it is quite a low drop shoe, which you know some people don't like. It doesn't feel very low drop to me. Like mm-hmm. I sometimes, if I use very aggressive low drop shoes, like more like racing shoes, I'll get a bit of calf, you know, uh, botheration. You know, it stresses the calf a bit more. But didn't have that problem at all with this shoe, so I was happy to roll through with it. Yeah, it is. It's a tricky one for me because there are times when the invincible is just one of my favourite shoes going, and then. The time when I was reviewing the shoe, it was a shoe that I found borderline unusable because I was worried about it uh, not really providing the support I want. And when it comes to the kind of miles you're using these for, those easy miles, those practical get them done miles, maybe a more practical shoe like this works better. Yeah, I, I'd also say that I, I think there's a thing about the, new, the, the the Invincible. When the Invincible One came out, it was a pretty exciting shoe. Like putting that that much Zoom X foam into a, a daily mod. Well, cushion shoe for easy runs and and longer runs was really interesting but i think now now with the invincible three i think there's so many other shoes around that are doing a similar thing that it it isn't as exciting anymore and when i put the invincible three on i think i was expecting it to do more because i've tested so many shoes recently that have got so much cushioning in it's not really there's a lot of shoes that are quite similar to it now and i don't think it is as exciting um but what i would say about it is that zoom x foam and i've said this about the other two versions as well is it doesn't it, it doesn't do the same thing as you get in like the vaporfly it, I, I think it definitely bounces you up it, it's it really do, it's nice on the legs if you're running in the invincible the end of the run your legs feel great and it really helps it along but it doesn't move you forwards um in the same way that you might expect from zoom x or some people might expect from zoom x foam um so i do think it's a shoe that just keeps you popping up nicely but i don't think there's any sort of performance or sort of tipping forward or anything you get from this shoe yeah, you don't direct the energy from that foam without the plate there. It kind of just splays all over the place um, in a nice way. But yeah, it's obviously not perfect for acceleration and stuff like that. So verdict, Nick, in these two shoes, which one are you going to go for? Oh, so it is quite a tough one for me. Neither of these are my favourite max cushion shoes. And max cushion shoes in general aren't necessarily my favourite types of shoes. But there are certainly times when the Invincible would be my very clear pick as just a more interesting, fun shoe. That's less the case with the Invincible 3 because I don't think it's as fun as the previous versions. But yeah, but at the same time, there are times when I really want to use the Invincible and there's never going to be the case with the New Balance Small V4. Like, it's always going to be good to use for its purpose. It's a very reliable shoe. It's a fair bit cheaper than the Invincible as well. So if you're looking for a shoe that you're going to use for long miles, easy miles as part of a rotation, I would very much go for the more V4 as the more reliable shoe. Just tick you over, protect the legs, put it away and go use more exciting shoes on other days. If you're looking for a shoe, if you're maybe more of a one shoe runner, you're looking for one shoe to use 5-10k a few times a week, want a bit of as much enjoyment as you can from those runs, then maybe the Invincible is the one to go for because it is a bit more exciting. It's, you know, it is a lot of fun. It bounces along. It works well in a rotation as well. It's just if you're like me, there'll be times when you'd rather have a more solid platform underfoot. And if you don't have that shoe available, you only have the Invincible. It is a bit kind of squirrely and wobbly underfoot, whereas the more V4 is as reliable as they come. How are you, Tom? What are you picking? 
probably not going to come as any surprise to you. New Balance more V4. Uh, but really, because of the things that you've said, I think it's just a great shoe. I always have this near the door. Um, it's my go-to shoe for most of the types of runs I do. So, you know, going out for 10K at my just sort of standard comfortable pace. If I'm going out for a, a recovery run, a slow run, it's still the, still the shoe that I go for. But also I like it because it. I think it's like a, it sits in that realm of like it's also sort of a daily shoe for some people as well because it's just very reliable very comfortable nicely stable and stuff like that so i do think it's a nice i think a lot of people will like this shoe uh, and i think it it it, it the, the way that you're running it is just very solid uh nothing that scary or odd about it um but i do i think the invincible three is a bit more of a niche shoe I do like the Invincible range, um, but I've never really found it to be a shoe that I pick up very often, um, just because I've got other shoes that, I, that, that that do the things that I want to do more. Um, I think for the people that really like that feeling, that soft sinking feeling, like that nice bounce that back as well, um, I think it's a great shout. And obviously Jane has, has talked about the Invincible uh, 1 and 2 quite a lot in the past as her, her favourite shoe. Um, cushion shoe so I, I think if you if you find if you really like the feel of this shoe it's, it's you're onto a massive winner but i do think for a lot of people it's a little bit more of a niche shoe and it's definitely not one that i pick up very often so that's it from us on this comparison video thanks a lot for watching if you got this far give us a like give us a subscribe and uh, if you go into the caption below you can also find a link to our podcast which comes out at the end of every month and we talk about lots of things to do with running latest kit uh, and have a section where we answer some of your questions as well so uh, if you want a bit more run testers have give it a listen so if you want a bit more run testers give it a listen all right catch you guys later <music>